Hey guys, it's Alina. For today's tutorial, I wanted to show you how to make an abalone shell texture. And if you're familiar with abalone shells, they have a lot of iridescence to them. They're usually blue and green with a lot of other sparkles of other texture showing through. And they'll have these lines and squiggles all throughout and sometimes they even have some holes in them. So if you're familiar with that type of shell, you'll you'll enjoy this tutorial. So I'm going to be using my iridescent and holographic brushes for Procreate, which you can purchase at the link below. If you have any other similar brushes, you're very welcome to follow along with those brushes as well. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm creating a canvas that is 3000 by 2000 pixels wide. And I'm going to my background layer and changing that to black by double tapping by the black but I decided I wanted it slightly bluish so I moved the outer ring to blue and then I moved that dot up ever so slightly so it's just a very very dark blue now. I'm selecting my AJ iridescent folder and I will go ahead and start out with my slanted brush from this folder and I'm using my iridescent intense color palette and selecting a green on the top layer there. And with this brush, I will go ahead and make some lines across the page and I will use a couple different colors and just kind of make some squiggly lines where they're not touching and there's a little bit of the background peeking through between them. And now I'm choosing my foil number one brush and I'm doing the top and bottom corners with this brush instead just for some contrast. And I will also go ahead and use this brush inside some of the lines where there's a lot of space between these other lines that I've drawn. I'm just adding some foil in here for contrast. Now I'm going to Adjustments, Liquify. And the type of Liquify effect that I'm using is called Edge. So I'm selecting that and changing the size to about 30%. And I will keep adjusting that as I go, depending on whether I like how it looks or not. And what I'm going to do with this is in between the two different lines of texture, where you can see the black background peeking through, I'm taking this and I am zipping them up together using this liquify effect so that you can still see the black background but you can also it's just closer together and it looks more like the lines of black on an abalone shell and you can see also that what I've done here is when there is a round area um, of black background showing through sometimes I will also use this edge effect to go around that circle and leave it as a circle where I'm going to put some more texture later on. So I'm just going to continue with this throughout the entire page and just zip up these lines close to each other with this edge effect.
An abalone shell will have a lot of lines on it, but also some little circles. So that's really just what I'm trying to accomplish with these little circles of foil that I've made. I'm going around them to define them more. And I'm also leaving some blank areas that I will fill in a bit later. I'm keeping the liquify brush size quite small. Um, I had originally had it at 30%, but it's actually at 20% now. And that's because when it is really big, the whole thing is kind of getting stretched inward and it can start to look kind of warped and distorted. Whereas I wanted to keep it um, concentrated on one spot where I'm working with it. Having added a new layer on top of what I've just drawn, I've chosen my foil number three brush and I'm choosing a green color and I'm just adding some little bits of foil into these, these darker circle areas that I left open last time so that it can resemble these little pockets of uh, iridescent color inside of an abalone shell. So I have two layers right now. I have the bottom layer that I first drew and the top layer I've made these little pockets on. So I'm duplicating that bottom layer and turning it off. And then I'm taking the top layer, tapping it, and then tapping merge down. So now that is all on the same layer. And I'm going back to liquify and changing the type to push. So now I'm going to use this, adding the, a little bit more momentum than what I had before. And I'm going to experiment with this by adding some ruffles to these edges so that just like a shell, it's not just these smooth lines, but it looks like there's some ripples and some ruffles in these lines going into each other.
At this point, after I had done all of these smaller little ripples and ruffles throughout the whole piece, I changed the size of my liquify and made it quite a bit larger. And then I'm using this to go throughout the piece and add just a bit more warping so that the whole thing sort of has a movement to it that is uniform throughout the whole thing. Now I'm adding a new layer on top of what I've already done and selecting my Mother of Pearl brush from the iridescent folder. And in that green color, I'm adding a bit of green on top of these green layers, not to cover it up completely, but just to have a bit of a sparkly effect. So if there's some areas that I don't like as well as others, I'll just use this to sort of cover it up a bit and leave the areas that I do really like. And I decided after experimenting a bit that I wanted to keep the colors fairly uniform here. So I'm using green over top of green and blue over top of blue and so on. I did want to keep kind of a shiny effect on some of these areas that had gotten lighter and looked like they had a reflection going on them. And with all of these brushes, if you keep going in the same area, it'll get shinier looking. And so that's just what I've done in a couple of areas just to have the illusion of a reflection. If ever anything I'm doing here does not line up with the, the, the different lines of color down below, I'm just taking my eraser, which is on the airbrush, and I'm just erasing here and there to make sure that everything lines up. Now I'm creating a new layer again on top of everything else and still in my iridescent folder I'm going in and selecting my glitter flakes number one brush 
and using a green color I will just add a little bit more sparkle and texture. At this point I decided to add one last layer and switch to my holographic brush folder and the mother of pearl brush within that holographic folder so this will have a lot more of a color range to it and I wanted this because I wasn't really sure how I felt about these pink lines they seemed a bit out of place so I wanted to add more of a range of color to those pink lines so that's what I will go ahead and do using the holographic version of the Mother of Pearl brush. So that's about it for this piece. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. Please consider subscribing if you like this content and would like to see more videos like this. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you.